In today's video I will show you different ways for programming in Android using your Android device. We are going to use a native application or we can use Termux to install Visual Studio Code like you are seeing right now or even PyCharm so we can program in Python very comfortably. And I will show you another option which is an online editor so you can program anywhere you are. So let's start with a native application that we can download from Google Play Store so we can program on your Android device. Let's start downloading PyDroid 3. This is the IDE we are going to use for Python. So we can just download and follow the first step. You can answer all these questions or you can just skip them. After the process finished, we just need to save the cookies configuration and we are going to close this message. But you can pay if you find the application useful. If you open the left menu, we can see that we have the interpreter, we have the terminal and we also have a pip section so we can install some packages. But for now, we are going to use the main window. You can try that everything works just by typing a print command. And to run the code, we just need to click on the run button in the bottom part. So now a new window will be open and we can see the output of the print message. When you try to save the file we are programming, you need to allow the application to access your internal storage. So you need to go to the setting of your Android device and allow access to the application. And now I will show you how to install third party libraries. We are going to the pip section and here you can write the name of the library you want to install. I'm going to install Flash. This is a third party library to create some API endpoints. And we are going to use this to create an HTTP server in an Android device. And now the process is finished, we just need to fulfill the code. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT for some example code to use with Flask. So now I just will copy this code and replace it in the script we were doing in PyDroid. This script, what it does is it runs an HTTP server and it returns whatever we want. So let's paste the commands we got from ChatGPT and let's run the code. When we run the code, we need to open a browser and go to the port 5000 like it says here. So we will see the response from the server. Now we can just modify the original code to see that the message changes and everything is working. So let's modify the return statement and we can see that if we run again the code and we go in the browser, we need to refresh and we will see the message here. Now I will show you an online editor that you can use if you are just learning or you just want to do some testing in Python. You can open this editor and write your code. You have the run button so you can do all the tests you want here. It's a good option in case you just want an online editor but personally I prefer having the option to run Python native so I don't need internet and I can install all the third party libraries I want. And now I will show you my preferred method to run Android in Python. I will start from my Debian Neon desktop environment that you can find how to do, install it in the video I leave in the description of this video. And here we have already Visual Studio Code installed and we have Python installed by default. You can check if you have Python by just typing Python minus minus version and you will see the version of Python. And also you can check the pip version with the same command. But in case you don't have these packages installed, you can search for them with the command sudo apt search and the name of the package, in this case python, and you will see all the packages that has the python name. So you can install the package that you prefer with the command sudo apt install and the name of the package in green. So now we can just open Visual Studio Code and start programming in python here. And remember that you can have Visual Studio Code and everything already configured in your Pyroot distro with my Debian Neon Desktop Environment video. I will leave it in the description of this video. So now we just need to run the code. We are going to open a terminal. You can go up in the menu New Terminal. And now we need to go to the path where the script is. In my case, I have it in the Documents folder. So let's go to the Documents folder and let's run the script with the command python and the script name like you are seeing right now. Now you can see that you have the output of the script and you can have your own projects here. In case you need to install any third party, you can just do it with the command pip install and the name of the library. Now I want to show you how to install PyCharm. This is one of the most famous IDEs and it has a community edition which is free. So let's go to the official web page. You can type it in Google, PyCharm Community Edition. And in the first link, we need to click on Other Versions. 
Here you will see all the versions available and we are going to use the community edition for ARM64 devices. So just click in the link and wait until PyCharm is downloaded. It can take a bit because the file is quite heavy, but once it finishes, we are going to the downloads folder and let's open a terminal here. So the first thing is to uncompress the file with the command you are seeing right now, tar minus all these letters and the file name, and just wait until the process finishes. When the process finishes, we are going to move to the PyCharm folder and here we are going to move to the bin folder. Here you can see that you have the pycharm.sh file. So this is the file that we just need to run. Dot slash and pycharm.sh and the installer will be open. The installation process is very simple. We just need to click on next, next, next until we can create the project like you are seeing right now. And we are going to create a new file. So after the process finish, we can just click on the name of the projects and click on new and new file. This IDE is similar to Visual Studio Code, but it is more oriented to Python and you can manage better the virtual environments. But this is a bit more technical. So to run the script, we can just click on the run button in the upper part and you will see here in the bottom part a console with the output. Now I will leave in the background the process to install Java and the JDK in case you have any problem with it. And my idea is to do some videos on how to run different programming languages in our Android devices. So if you want to see any other programming language in the channel, leave it in the comments. So I hope you like this video and don't forget to share, like and subscribe.